Yes, Moochie Poochie. This is makeup. I'm trying to lick my face off. What are you doing? You just want to sit up here? I got to record, Bubba. He's licking my hand. Thank you. Great. Adios. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking about superworms and I'm going to be talking about them while I show footage of my numerous pets eating superworms. I've done this already with hornworms and with waxworms. I'm also going to be doing it with dubia roaches, earthworms, all different kinds of feeder insects that I give to my pets. I'm not sure which order they'll come out in but I will include a playlist to them up here and down below. In this video, I'll be covering nutrition, how you can offer superworms, some different myths and things about them that I've heard. I'm just gonna be talking about them at length, and so I will include timestamps down below to not only the different species that I'm feeding, so if you just wanna watch leopard geckos, for example, for funsies, I will include when the leopard geckos start. I will also be including the timestamps for the information throughout this video. One last thing that needs to be said is that I have a bunch of special needs, adopted, rescued, pets and some of them just look a bit wonky or they act a bit wonky in comparison to maybe other animals that you've seen of the same species. So for example, I have a lot of Enigma leopard geckos which have uh, Enigma syndrome which is a neurological disorder. Um, so they will take food off of tongs differently and any animal that has a neurological problem or a birth defect that's noticeable I will include on the screen just so that you are aware that this animal is like not what it's supposed to look like or what it's supposed to act like because I don't want there to be any confusion. Now with all of that said, ready to start the video. Real quick, subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and away we go! So a superworm is the larval form of the darkling beetle, which is a medium to large sized beetle that's really dark in color and they have like long legs. They're super cute actually. But the superworm is the larval form of that and so it is a large worm that is tan, brown, or yellowish in coloration. However, when a superworm is freshly molted, you will notice that it is super pale in color and it can even look white. A superworm is five times larger than a mealworm and should not be mistaken for a giant mealworm, which is a completely different insect. When a superworm pupates into a beetle, its pupil form looks very alien buggish. I mean, it kind of looks like Weedle's evolution into Kakuna for anyone who likes Pokemon. But you won't notice your superworm pupating if it is continuously fed and housed with other superworms. When you buy them, they come in a burrowing medium. A lot of times they'll come in like a little plastic container that's filled with burrowing substrate. And unless you look closely, you won't even see them because they stay quite below the substrate. If you have them shipped to you, you'll notice that sometimes they won't ship them in certain temperatures and that's because they cannot tolerate temperatures above 80 or below 40 Fahrenheit. If they experience those temperatures, they will begin dying off. And dead superworms are black like they, the whole body turns black, they become still, and they stink. Dead superworms are stinky. A way to prevent them dying is to make sure that you keep them in those proper temperatures and also to offer plenty of ventilation, especially if you are gut loading them, which I obviously recommend doing because gut loading is what you're supposed to do for any insects before you offer them off. But with superworms, if you offer them any type of food that's like a fruit or a vegetable to gut load them and you don't have proper ventilation, that food will go nasty quick and the smell is not good and it can kill your superworms. So I just totally recommend whatever you keep them in, have ventilation. I keep mine in a square plastic container that has absolutely no lid whatsoever and that offers plenty of ventilation. Another way to prevent having like too much food or food going moldy is just to offer a little bit at a time and see how much gets consumed in the time that you offer to the time that you want to offer again. So if you want to offer food every day, you're going to want to offer amount that can be completely consumed in that time period. Superworms will happily eat any vegetables that you normally would feed to your feeder insects. So carrots, they'll eat the stems of leafy greens, they'll eat squash, they'll eat bell pepper, they'll eat broccoli, they'll also eat fruits. So if you offer fruits to yours, they'll eat those as well. I mean, they're not picky. They'll eat literally anything. You just want to keep in mind that when you're gut loading, whatever you're offering the superworm is going to eventually be offered to your animal. So you want to offer foods that are 
nutritious, high in calcium. You don't want to offer really protein rich foods. Like I know for leopard geckos, for example, if you feed the feeder insects that you give to your leopard geckos, something that's high in protein, it can cause them to have gout and problems associated with gout. So I just wouldn't recommend feeding something high protein. They already are a protein themselves. So you just want to make sure that they're eating nutritious foods that would offer vitamins and calcium. So now let's talk about what they are made up of. So they are made up of 58% moisture, 18% fat, 1% ash, 3% fiber, and 20% protein. Their calcium to phosphorus ratio is 177 milligrams of calcium to 2,370 of phosphorus. This is a bad calcium to phosphorus ratio. So if you don't know what a calcium to phosphorus ratio, it's basically... Your animal's ability to absorb calcium is dependent on how much phosphorus is in the insect. And so if the phosphorus is too high, it will like detract from how much calcium can be absorbed by your animal, which is why we dust our feeder insects with calcium because most of them do not have a good calcium to phosphorus ratio. And superworms fall in that category. So you always want to dust them with calcium. Another thing to keep in mind is that superworms are a bit high when it comes to fat. Because superworms are a bit on the fatty side, what you want to do is offer them in a variation with other insects. And this is something you should do regardless. No matter what you're offering to your animals, you want to offer a variety as best as you possibly can because it's always good for them to have variety for a number of reasons. And one reason is because some of the insects that we offer are quite fatty. So if we offered superworms all the time, it could lead to obesity in our reptiles. So what we want to do is offer superworms along with other feeder insects like dubia roaches, like crickets, like millworms, like hornworms, like waxworms. Whatever you have at your disposal, just offer as much of a variety as possible. There's a couple more things I want to talk about, one of which is if you are nervous about the superworm biting your reptile or the myth that it's going to eat its way out of your reptile. I can't say there's any truth to that whatsoever. I've been offering superworms to my animals for years and never had that happen. Um, but if you are afraid of that happening, what you can do is crush the head of the superworm before you offer it. I recommend doing that for animals that don't have like sharp, crunchy teeth, like amphibians, for example, just to be safe anyway but yeah it can be a little grotesque you know crushing the insect's head so if you don't want to do that you don't have to but it is something that you can do if you're feeling nervous about offering them another thing i want to address is that some people will say superworms can cause impaction because they have a really fibrous exoskeleton this is not going to be the case unless your husbandry is really bad or the animal is sickly or the animal has prior digestive issues or if you're only offering superworms and nothing else like you should be fine i've been offering superworms for years without any issue and there's one thing I do want to say, I would not normally offer them to bearded dragons because bearded dragons get insects so infrequently that you want to offer really good ones. I just gave them superworms for the first time in 2020 just to film this video and include them in there. So while superworms aren't normal for my bearded dragon, you can offer them to bearded dragons. I recommend dubia roaches because they are a healthier feeder insect for them. They are fine to offer your bearded dragon in variety, so just keep that in mind. You don't always want to offer them, but you can sometimes. The last thing I want to say is that you can get your superworms at Josh's Frogs, that's where I get mine, and you can use code JESSICA15, J-E-S-S-I-C-A-1-5, for 15% off. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed learning about superworms. If you did, please let me know down below in the comments or leave a like if you didn't like it. Um, and you dislike the video, you still having me out, so thank you. Also, please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check the links below for all kinds of stuff, social media, Patreon, blah, blah, blah. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!